Well, first question, could you tell me uh, why you are here today? What are you going to do? Well, I'm here to talk to a group of people with lived experience. Um, our concern is to address the stigma of mental illness. Uh, we believe that the stigma of mental illness is as big a problem as the illness themselves. Um, that many people with serious mental illness want to go to work, but they can't because of the disabilities, or they want to live on their own. Um, but you know, the other reason they can't go to work is because employers won't hire them, landlords won't rent to them, and so we're very concerned about changing the stigma. All right. And uh, could you tell me something about your work? What do you do? What do I do? So I'm a licensed psychologist by trade. Um, and um, I've worked for about 25 years. I worked in uh, services, so I provide vocational rehabilitation, independent living sort of approaches. And I realized about 15 years ago that the problems people have is not just because of their mental illness, but everybody's reaction to it. And so um, we've become very interested in not how to help the person, but that's important, but how to help the world they live in, how to change the stigma. Uh, in the process, I've been a person with serious mental illness for about 30 years. Um, and I've slowly over time realized that's an important part of my story, so I begin to blend that in. All right, and when you talk about stigma, can you give some examples? Stigma is prejudice and discrimination. It's the same thing that uh, is racism or sexism or ageism. It's when you think bad things of a black person because they're black and you decide not to hire them. For mental illness, it's the big stereotype is that people with mental illness are dangerous and so because I believe they're dangerous, I'm afraid of them, and I won't hire them or rent to them or help them get the kind of relationships that all of us want. So you've developed Honest, Open and Proud. Can you tell me something about that? Tell you about Honest, Open and Proud. So we believe, I believe the best way to understand stigma and how to change it is to look at the experience of a lesbian's gays, bisexual, and transgender, unless there be any doubt. I absolutely do not think LGBT are people with mental illness. But they've had experiences very similar to what people with mental illness go through, which is they can keep it a secret. And keeping things a secret is horrible for your health and wellness. We know that for the LGBT population. Our own research shows that for people with mental illness. So disclosing can help, um, but it's not an easy process. You have to decide about the pros and cons of disclosing. You have to decide who you're going to tell. You have to decide what your story is. That's honest, open, proud. It's meant to deal with self-stigma, but I also believe the more people that are out, the more the discrimination that generally everybody has against people with mental illness will, will diminish. Can you tell me something about how uh, uh, Honest, Open, Proud has been scientifically, I believe, proven? So what is the scientific evidence? Yeah. So I'm a scientist. <laughs> I can speak to you hours about multivariate analysis of variants and Malinois analyses, but you don't want to hear that. Um, we've done three randomized controlled trials. This is the same kind of methodology you would use to test a new medication or a psychotherapy. Um, honest, open, proud leads to less sense of self-stigma, uh, more sense of self-worth. Um, actually, in one study, it showed a decreased depression um, because I've always said there's sort of a double attack for mental illness. It's bad enough having a mental illness, but on top of that, you've got to feel ashamed of yourself. And so it helps people with that. Coffee sound. <laughs> um, well, uh, we have not exactly begun with practicing Honest, Open, Proud in the Netherlands because somehow um, organizations don't seem to uh, understand the urgency of it. Um, what advice would you give to the Netherlands on how to implement your program successfully here? I think, this, I think there is a secret solution to changing stigma. 
And it's again what we learn from the LGBT lessons. Uh, my children were blessed by not growing up with the stigma of LGBT that I had. And that's not because in health class they were taught it was genetic or hormonal. It's by the time they got to health class they knew they have a gay uncle. Um, they were fortunate to have gay teachers. And we have gay ministers. So they came out. And so the degree to which people with mental illness come out really changes the dialogue. And here's one of the important messages is I am a heterosexual man. I am all for gay rights, but I am in the back seat for that. Um, LGBT community needs to lead it. I'm an ally. So changing the stigma of mental illness needs to be led, needs to be led by people with mental health challenges. And that can be different because the public believes doctors need to do everything for psych patients. And that's not the case. They need to do it for themselves. And today I met these wonderful ambassadors who are people from all over the, all over the Netherlands, who are people who do all sorts of work, and they're out. They're out with their mental health challenges, and that's going to change the equation. We're probably 30 years behind the LGBT movement, but I imagine huge strides have been made in the Netherlands. You're probably many years ahead of us. But things have improved in the United States to the degree to which people come out. Th those were my questions. Now I have a couple uh, of questions sent to me. And the first one is, what would be an, if an effective way to handle self-stigma? So self-stigma, uh, what would be an effective way to handle self-stigma? So self-stigma, think about it. What happens when you grow up in a culture that thinks you're bad or ashamed of yourself? Um, because you're gay and then you turn 10, 12, 14 years old and you find out you are gay. You internalize it. And what happens if you grow up in a culture that thinks mentally ill people are crazy and dangerous and then you become a young adult and you get a mental health problem, you internalize it. That's self-stigma. Um, again, it's sort of what I said before. It's bad enough to be depressed, but on top of that you should feel ashamed of yourself, and they shouldn't. Shame is poison. One way to deal with stigma is to disclose, or at least to consider it. And so Honest, Open, Proud is to help people decide whether they want to be honest and out about their mental health challenges, and to do it with pride. It's, it's part of who they are. And so people to be authentic should have, if they want to, make that decision and share it. Uh, I had one question that I thought was quite interesting. This person is wondering, um, how can you be proud of something that's actually quite negative? So if you have a depression, well, there's quite nothing positive about it. So what does the proud in Honest, Open and Proud stand for? Absolutely. Absolutely. What does the proud in Honest, Open and Proud mean? Again, let me put it in perspective historically and then address that. Um, when I was a kid, um, there was nothing to be proud of for being gay. Uh, we would say, if you're going to be gay, okay, but don't tell anybody because you're somehow broken. And it's just the same thing with mental illness. Um, I absolutely believe everybody in the world has a mental illness. Some of us are disabled by it. And when you're disabled by it, it becomes part of who you are. And so despite my mental health challenges, which effectively took a four-year education program and turned it to 16, despite that, I've accomplished. And I'm not talking about my degrees. I'm talking about the fact that I can handle this disability, which hasn't gone away, and still be hopeful. I don't think everybody who's listening to this is successful if they go out and become doctors and lawyers. None of my family members are. But if you have goals and you can go do it, then it's something to be proud of. The other thing I like to talk about is the idea of being authentic. It's who you are. And so your viewers are Dutch. And so who they are is part of being Dutch. I'm Irish. I'm Irish-American. And so every March 17th, for those of you who don't remember, that's St. Patrick's Day, is I'm proudly Irish. I'm also a person with mental illness. I'm also, I'm also a person who has a dead father. I'm a parent. I'm a husband. 
I should be able to share that if I want to. Some people with mental health, they want to, and so they should, and do it proudly. It's part of who they are. I've asked you this uh, this morning, actually, and it's also in my questions. What are the differences in dealing with stigma in the United States and the Netherlands? Maybe cultural differences. Well, you asked me this morning about cultural differences, and my quick, easy response is absolutely there are cultural differences. I'm aware of what the cultural issues are in the United States. I'm humble. I don't know what they are here. I just know if you're going to develop a program here, it needs to reflect Dutch people. And you need to have a diverse group of Dutch people. So at a minimum, you need to have men and women making this program. You probably need to have young and old. Um, I do not understand ethnic diversity in your country. In my country, if we do anything, we need to make sure African Americans are there. Latinos are a big part of our country. So I don't think I need to be able to say exactly what the differences are other than to know. I can tell you humorously one of the things that you, you've adapted Oz Open Proud for Dutch. Um, in the United States, we're very interested in helping people get into faith-based communities if they want, um, because that's going to be a huge level of support. And I understand Dutch don't do churches, so why, why do that if that's not what we do? Um, I don't know what the social structure is in the Netherlands. I, I mean, I understand the idea of family and friends, but um, we do a lot of work with Latinos. Latinos have a very different family structure than I do as European. They are very family involved. When I go to the doctor, I don't have anybody there. They'll have mom and dad, and that's their culture. So, of course, you want to reflect and respect their culture. Makes perfect sense. Um... What can mental health care professionals do to eliminate stigma? What can mental health professionals do? The first response they're not going to want to hear, they want to be in the back seat. Um, unless they have a mental health challenge, in which case they want to be out with it. So if they want to know what they could do, they need to ask people, ambassadors, people who are out, what they should do. And they also need to be aware that one of the big sources of stigma is them. Um, and so th they clearly need to promote hope. Uh, when I was in school, I learned schizophrenia was the kiss of death diagnosis, and that was the worst thing in the world, because the first thing I did is took away all your hope. Um, hope is the medicine for health. And so they want to promote hope, they want to promote recovery, they want to promote self-determination. You decide. You know, you might make a decision I don't like, you decide and I'll be glad to give you feedback and thoughts along the way and I'll be there for you you decide last question um, what's it like for you to be here how do you like it so far I've been here about eight to ten times so I know the Netherlands well um, actually I like to say the first foreign speaking country I was ever in was here and we came from from Britain at about 10 o'clock at night, we went to a bar. And the first thing I remember is there were dogs in the bar, which we don't do. Um, and the second thing I remember is, is there were a break, and the band went up, and they started playing Born in the USA. <laughs> so um, Dutch seemed to be nice. Um, I am always humbled. Though this is, this is becoming more and more in the world, the degree to which you speak English. Um, you have, you're much more, well, in some ways, you're much more culturally uh, advanced than we are. Um, other ways you seem a little bit more uptight than we are. Um, we're much more diverse than you are. Um, so diversity. Um, and we want to move here because we have this barbarian for a president. So. Is there anything you feel you haven't said and you should? Anything you want to add? No, that's good. <coughs> Great. Well, that's it.